Hi, welcome back to another hour with Crowder with me, your host Crowder. Like, share, subscribe, and comment. And if you are already a subscriber, go ahead, ding the bell so that you can get all of my latest podcasts every Tuesday. I am back visually in effect in your face watching me watching you watch me <laughs> i told you guys i'd get it back I, it was just a bunch of stuff that i was doing trying to get together so that i could get everything i know that you guys are probably like this is what i was waiting for nothing in the background no nothing no. <laughs> i'm getting it together don't worry it's gonna be fire it's gonna be dope um but yes let me go ahead and get into all of the topics for today, I got like a little little list and little scrapbook of stuff that I've been wanting to go over because I've been seeing it throughout the week. Um, no, it's not Travis Scott. <laughs> I know that's a really big one nowadays. Everybody's like conspiracy theory or black man getting done in by white supremacy. I don't know. I really don't care. I don't keep up with that stuff. I probably will get my comments on it. If like I start running out of time and like real topics to go over, but I'm going to get the real topics out the way first. The first one that I got is I think that Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube are all trying to shadow ban me. It sounds really ridiculous because I'm just a small time YouTuber for now, but it's just a lot of funny, duddy stuff going on. Like, just the other day, I couldn't post on my on my um podcast page on Facebook, not my um personal page, but the podcast where I run the podcast from and put the clips and the videos and everything that would not let me do anything. Um, it wouldn't let me post. It wouldn't let me say anything. And it said this right here. Yeah, so that right there is you went against community guidelines, but I didn't say anything. I said nothing at all that was offensive or no cuss words in it or anything. And then on YouTube, it said the exact same thing. And so I'm just like, okay, I'm going against both community guidelines, but what did I say? So I clicked on it, wouldn't let me click on it, wouldn't let me do or even see what the violation was. So I was like, well, you know what? A lot of YouTubers say that, you know, they go against community guidelines and they try to dispute the claim. And then YouTube never gets back with them. Facebook never gets back with them. All of these social pl um, media platforms never get back with them. And so then I just tell my girlfriend, Hey, see if you can do it from your page. Same exact thing. She couldn't do anything. Cause she has, um, she kind of runs my page a little bit. She's more on social media than I am. So I let her run my page from time to time. If it's something very serious, then she'll hit me up and say, hey, what about this? But yeah, she couldn't either. I literally had to go over to TikTok and post like stuff now because Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and Instagram are all just like, I guess, fed up with me. I don't know if I'm speaking too much truth, but Honestly, this is just my opinions. I'm just speaking my opinions about what they put out and then reading between the lines and then giving it to you guys. I didn't say anything. I didn't say, I've never said anything was for sure or track, I mean, or truth or fact or anything. I'm just giving you guys the, the excerpt from the article that I'm reading online that they gave me and simply just saying, hey, ask yourself these questions you know, I, I don't understand what the big deal is, but I really honestly think that I'm already gay, I'm already black, and I'm already a woman. And half of those agendas that be coming across in mainstream media, I don't mess around with. I don't approve of them. And I oppose of them, not all, but most of them. And it's because I can see, first of all, that they're using us, just like I said, the LBGT community, they're using you. They're, you're the Trojan horse. Um, feminism. I'm for feminism, but the organization and the mainstream definition and actions of feminism, like taking the men out of the home. Feminism has nothing to do with taking men out of the home and um, emasculating men. It just means you being a woman that can take care of yourself and you can do all the things that a man does, but you still hold your feminine entity. I think I said that right, but yeah, you get my drift. You don't know what I'm talking about. And most of the things that I see on mainstream media 
is emasculating men to be feminine. You know, oh, you can't have no job. You know, you can you can have a job and you shouldn't be having babies. You shouldn't be locked up and your husband shouldn't have to lead the way. And that's the whole BS. That's all BS. That's not what feminism is about. Um, the LBGT community, I said this last week, they're using you. You know, they're, you know, using you as a Trojan horse to get all of these agendas that they want to cross. And I don't approve with a lot of the things that the LBGT organizations, not grassroots because there's grassroots organizations of all three of these sectors that I'm in. I'm black. There's a black grassroots. Um, I'm gay. I'm a gay woman. So I'm in LBGT community and it's a black and it's a LBGT grassroots organization. And then there's the corporate side, there's a black grassroots and then there's a corporate side and the corporate side is AKA the media mainstream, anything on media mainstream, you might not want to be following that. And then I do deem myself as a feminist, but not in the light of what mainstream media has told you that you should be. And there's feminist grassroots organizations. Usually those are the ones that you want to follow, not that corporate BS that they put across mainstream to make you think that, oh, this is how everyone thinks. No, that's not how everyone thinks. Go to some of those meetings. Go meet real feminists, real LBGT um, Q members of the society, real black people that don't have a whole bunch of money and don't have something to lose by telling the truth. Now that's me. I don't have a lot to lose, you know, because I don't have the views. I don't have the subscribers. And I think that they're even playing around with that because I'll see that people, people will literally text me and say, Oh, I loved your podcast. I love, you know, what you're saying, what you're doing. And I think that you're standing up and you're, you know, doing it right, you know, and then they'll be like, Oh, I subscribed. And then I'll look, I'll go, I'll refresh my page. I'll go see if they subscribe and nothing. And like three, four days later, I might get one or two, but on my Facebook page, it'll be a whole bunch of people that watch my videos or something. I don't know. Me personally, I'm not worried about it because at the end of the day, I'm just spreading truth, my truth about what I see about the articles that they put out and then they contradict themselves and then they get mad when someone calls out the contradiction because you're supposed to be sleep. You ain't supposed to be woke. Bad gay, bad black person, bad feminist. You can't go against this mainstream media. We're trying to help you out. That's what they think of us. They want us to be sleep. They want us to be sheep. They want us to hang on to every word. And people are picking up the fact that, especially during the whole, you know, CV thing, CV pen plandemic, you know, whatever. I'm not going to say those words because also one of my videos got taken down because I mentioned the CV, you know. So, you know, you, you, all these small YouTubers try to be as careful as possible with words and sentences and things that you say because they will take your video down, but it's cool. I got it, you know. If you did miss that episode, it is on Anchor, Spotify, Google Play, and uh, I guess not YouTube anymore. <laughs> but yeah, you could also catch my full episodes on um, Facebook and Hour with Crowder as well. So yeah, it's just getting to the point where it's like they understand which they are mainstream media, elites, Illuminati, whatever you want to call them. They are figuring out that the average Joe Schmo, working class people, people that are really getting it out the mud, people that are grassroots organizations are figuring out that mainstream media isn't telling the truth. And to get the truth, you have to go to someone that doesn't have anything to lose because those anchors at those mainstream medias and those news anchors and everything, they have things to lose. They're making this amount of money. They have a script, everything scripted. I mean, you can go and watch, you know, a clip of, you know, them all saying the same thing, the same way. That's someone orchestrating that. 
that's that's not by coincidence that everybody in the whole newscast got the exact same script to read because everything's not going it, it, one thing that's going on in texas isn't going to be going on in colorado one thing that's going on in colorado isn't going to be going on in wyoming so why do y'all all have the same script you know y'all all seen that clip i'll probably slide it in right here false news has become, become all, all too common on, on social, social media, media. But yeah, you've seen that, you know, video of all of them saying the same thing verbatim. So now people are going to grassroots organizations and alternate outlets to get their, their, their news. They're not trusting the news anymore. So I think that, yeah, it might possibly be shadow banned. And it's really sad because it's like, this is literally a strip of freedom of speech. You know, we talk about freedom of speech all the time. And that's why I got really mad about last week with people and the baby. And I even said, I don't think I put out that episode, but I had something to say about people censoring Trump. I mean, censoring Elijah Muhammad, censoring just all of these people that have an opposing um, fact or an opposing conversation about whatever it is that the mainstream me media does. But yeah, that's basically what's going on. Have really no ID or idea what's really going on with news these days. It's just getting ridiculous. So I'll probably end up going to Rumbler or something like that in the near future or Patreon. And so that I could get what I need to get done because it's not getting done here on YouTube. You know, I'll probably even set up like a website so that people can go and listen, you know, free, like free, you know, everything's for free, but I'll probably go and set up something like that online because yeah, it's getting ridiculous here on YouTube and you pretty much can't curse. You can't be your authentic self. You can't say your opinion about anything and, and less it aligns with mainstream media or mainstream news so yeah but of course everybody has basically seen um excuse me the cow renal huh a renal y'all know i'll be having problems with that the cow rittenhouse case and as I said last week, I still haven't put that episode out. I'm going to put that out, that episode out Tuesday, and then this episode will come out Thursday so that y'all can align and see what I was talking about because I've been said that he was going to get off. I don't even know why people think that it's any different, that he's not going to get off. But let me just read a little excerpt because I don't want to say anything off. Okay, here we go. This is AP News. Um, if everybody forgot what this guy did, he was a 17-year-old kid that ended up shooting, I think, three protesters. So I'm going to just read this excerpt and show y'all the excerpt in the video. Cal Rittenhouse walked the streets of Kenosha, Wisconsin, a rifle slung across his chest and showed us the weapon was supposed to be for hunting on a friend's property up north, the friend says. But on that night in August 2020, Rittenhouse said he took the Smith & Western AR-style semi-automatic with him as he volunteered to protect properties damaged during protests the previous evening. Before midnight, he used it to shoot three people, killing two. After a rough two-week trial, a jury will soon deliberate deliberate whether Rittenhouse is a guilty of charges including murder that could send him to prison for life was the was the then 17 year old forced to act in self-defense while trying to deter crime as he and his defense attorney says or did Rittenhouse the only person in a well-armed crowd to shoot anyone provoke people with his weapon instigating the bloodshed as prosecutors argue now I see a lot of black media saying that he was out to shoot people I can't make that judgment call because we just don't know you know um 
He said that he was walking around trying to give people help. It even in one article says he was cleaning up graffiti and he was over there trying to protect businesses. Whatever. I don't care. I've been to a protest and yeah, I've had to calm people down from tearing up property because at the end of the day, it's supposed to be a peaceful protest. We're not supposed to be here to tear up people stuff and cause a, a riot. We're just supposed to be protesting. But so I'm and I'm not on the protester side either because if somebody's whooping your butt with you know um a skateboard and wood or whatever they was beating him up with then yeah that's a weapon also just one of the weapons are you know more stronger and accurate than the other but I do want to chime in on civil arrest because this is actually what he was doing Cal Rittenhouse was making a civil arrest basically citizens protecting their space but and I'm all for citizen arrest I think that black people should make more citizen arrest in their own neighborhood because we know that the cops do not give us a fair trial it's been plenty of times where it was someone black trying to protect the neighborhood and it was someone white in the neighborhood that was doing the crime and the cops would come and arrest the black man thinking that he was the aggressor of the situation. So yes, I'm not by any chance against civil citizen arrests, but we have to understand Cal, you have to understand that when you do a citizen arrest, you do, you should not. And you do not, have the backing of the police but it's clear in this case that he does have the backing of the police and he does have the backing of the jury and he does have the backing of even the judge <laughs> if you go and look at the those trials it's like whoa he's scream the judge is screaming at the prosecutor he's shutting down court to give him a break because he's crying so hard he's it just seems like he's coddling him to the highest extent. And like I said, I'm pretty unbiased in this situation because if you're a protester and you go out to go protest, there might be a chance that you get hurt. And if you're one of the people that are trying to conduct the civil citizen arrest, you might get hurt. So is hand in hand. But the thing that I don't understand is that it wasn't even his neighborhood. He drove to West Constance and I'd see a lot of people saying, Oh, well that's about 20, 30 minutes away, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm not driving to a situation that I didn't get permission to be at or even call to be at. I mean, he was just simply volunteering. Now, if you read the climate of, the world at that time, back in 2020, when that George Floyd incident incident happened, you could clearly see that maybe, 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 just maybe, I shouldn't go out here with a gun. <laughs> maybe I shouldn't go out here at all. Maybe I shouldn't take this gun across state lines. And someone in the comments brought up a really, really decent question. Is his mom apparently dropped him off? There's no way that my mom would drop me off in a situation that I could possibly get hurt. The moment that she knew that I needed a gun to be here. No, you're not going. So first of all, what type of mother is that? Second of all, why are you volunteering your time to something that no one even called you out to be in and then cry when you get caught in a situation well if you wasn't there in the first place which no one even called you out there to be someone would even understand that on one of the businesses and he said I did not call him out there neither did any of those other businesses he was just a volunteer so that's second third you have a gun at the end of the day you should be at the peak of feeling comfortable and feeling protected because I don't care if that dude did have a skateboard. I would have just shot up in the air. I would have shot in the air. 
usually when you shoot in the air, people run because people don't know where the shots are coming from. So it's just really wild to me that this guy is going to get off. And fourthly, because I already know how things go in the judici judicial system with black people versus white people versus Mexicans versus China. I know how that is. We already know that black people is at the bottom of the list when it comes to justice in the justice system. So I even would love to tell black people, don't worry about this. Don't worry about this case. You already know what's up. You already know that he's going to get off and he'll maybe, just maybe, get the charge of the gun. The reason why I'm telling black people to don't worry about this at all is because he's not going to get pinned on the charge of the gun because in Wisconsin, I looked a little bit into this. He was actually well within his rights to not only have the gun as a 17 year old, but have the style gun that he had according to Wisconsin. I don't know what it is in Chicago. I mean, in Illinois, but in Wisconsin, he was legal to have it. So, He's definitely going to get news just in. He actually, the judge actually dropped the charges of that, gu of that gun charge for him going across state lines and having the gun. It's had something to do with the, um, the length of the gun and, and, and you can have that style rifle in Wisconsin. So he's not, he's not going to jail. You guys, he, he's not going to go to jail because according to, was constant law. You can't have that style gun. You can't be 17 and have that gun. And he was well within his rights to be protesting. And the fact that he was running away from the crowd and the crowd was chasing him, then it looks like self-defense. But I do want to kind of chime in at the fact that white people are real technical, real technical. The judicial system is really technical when it comes to cases like this and white people are the quote unquote victim of the situation. You know, Cal Rittenhouse being the victim of the situation. But you see other cases like um, the New York Five where they didn't even have parents present to be questioned by cops and then it's just like, oh, well, you know, I don't really know. You know, we did kind of do that, but we kind of didn't start stuttering and all this shit. We, they get, the point is, they just get really sloppy when it's black people involved in cases like this and real technical and real law abiding when it's white people that get caught up in this type of thing. And let me just clarify something. Black people aren't mad that Cal Rittenhouse is going to get off. They're mad because if it was a black person, this would have never flew. This would have been one of those sloppy cases that we would have been hearing about on Netflix five years from now. You know, just like the New York Five and the and Andrew, uh, I think what is his name, the Broder case, when they found out that he was actually – Innocent in so many other cases where black people that was actually following the law is put in jail, you know, not doing the crime at all. So that's what we really mad about. And then there's dusty white people that want to argue this point. We keep trying to tell these dusty white people, and I call them the dusty whites because. White people that understand how systematic racism is set up in place so that the black people never rises, they understand to a certain extent. And they're willing to help us with all these little causes and be our allies and all that stuff. I'm not impressed, whatever. But it's the dusty whites that look at, you know, Fox News and you know, have these talking points, just like I brought up the one case of the Chicago Five or the Central Park Five. That's what it is, Central Park Five. Even though all the evidence goes against that they raped the woman and that they didn't do it, 
it was still just a sloppy case and dusty white people will still be like, well, you know, they shouldn't have been in the park that late. Where was their mother at? What was this at? What was that at? And then when you come to this case, Cal Rittenhouse, and I know that it's not the same case or even similar. I'm just bringing up a point that white people are technical when it comes to their kind and very sloppy when it comes to ours. And they have all these little talking points that they want to go across. But then like back to my point, then you'll get the Cal Rittenhouse case and they'll bring up the laws of the gun, the laws of this, the laws of that. Oh, he can do this. He can do that. But you know, damn well, you will be asking dusty white person that's defending this type of behavior and not seeing it from the point of view of a black person. If it was a black child, you would not have those same talking points. You wouldn't. I know for a fact that you wouldn't. And Furthermore, I just want to bring up the fact that the mother, that that was a crazy thing. I still can't believe that she brought her child into a situation where they needed a gun. And it's just ridiculous. So I just want to let black people know, and myself included, because I got real tied up into the case, for sure, because... You know, it's white people and black people out there protesting for a cause that we all think is a good cause for one second in the whole world. Everybody agreed that the police did somebody wrong. Everybody had seen this cop do it. It was on video. He did it for way too long. Everybody was like, okay, this is wrong. There's no talking point that you can go off on because there's nothing that you can say to justify someone putting their knee on someone's neck for over five minutes. So, and then it just got back to the point where it was all these racial court trials, you know, Ahmaud Aubrey is one of them that happened after that. I think before that, a little, a little while ago, before the George Floyd, it was, um, Oh, what is his name? Oh, uh, they, we just got a street named after him. I forget. I, and that's really sad that I've forgotten people, black people that have died because it's been so many of them within the last three years. But I mean, Breonna Taylor, um, you, the list goes on and on and on. So my thing that I want white people, but especially the dusty whites is ask yourself, I want you to have a killing, uh, to kill a mockingbird moment. I think everybody's read that book. I think you read it in like the sixth grade where he tells the whole jury the, the um, story or the situation that happened. And then he tells them everything that, you know, they urinated on her, they spit on her, they dragged her behind their Ford truck and they was drinking and they was drunk. And then he says, now close your eyes. And she was black. And it was like the pin drop. And I think that's what white America, especially the dusty whites, need to do. Start to ask yourself, would I have the same feeling about this if the kid was black? So that's my wrap up of that. Don't worry about this. We got way too much other stuff to be worried about because we already know how the judicial system does us. I don't know why I'm having so much trouble with that word today, but we already know how that system does us. And the most that we can do is just breathe and step back away from that because honestly, I do think that it's just going to bring up a lot of racial tension, which not trying to be mean, but wasn't no black people that got killed. So for once, you know, for once. But um, back into this Ahmad Aubrey case, it's creeping up on us. Um, they're already in the trial dates. Everything is already happening. I think that they're on trial. But if you forgot, like I forgot, and many black people forget because so many of us just get killed throughout the year and it get you know 
publicized in the news and we just, you know, so many, so, so much overload of us dying, you know? So if you did forget about the Ahmaud Arbery case, Okay, Mr. Ahmad Aubrey, a 25-year-old black man, was chased by an armed white resident of a South Georgia neighborhood. They are now facing trial on murder charges. Atlanta, three white Georgia men stand accused of murdering Ahmad Aubrey, a 25-year-old unarmed black man, after suspecting him of committing a series of black break-ins. And I say black ends. See that? Ugh, man. Commit, committing a series of break-ins in their neighborhood outside the coastal city of Brunswick Wick, in South Carolina. Opening statements in the trial of the three men, Gregory McMichael, 67, his 35-year-old son, Travis McMichael, and their neighbor, William Bryans, 52, are expected to begin on Friday. It will be one of the most closely watched trials with civil rights overtone in the United States since the April murder conviction of Derek Chauvin, the former Minneapolis police officer who was captured in a bystander video kneeling on the neck of another unarmed black man, George Floyd, for roughly nine minutes. The video of that incident created an international uproar and raised serious questions about the treatment of minorities at the hand of police. That was a little... oh. Let me just um say just this one last one. The slang of Mr. Aubrey was also captured on a videotape that was widely viewed by the public, and the trial of his accused killers will also bring up issues of policing, although in this case it will involve questions about private citizens and their right to detain people who they believe to be breaking in. So catch that right there. They said to believe that they be breaking in, and he thought that it was the person that had been doing break-ins lately. Now, let me just start from the beginning of all of this. Let me just bring out my little notes because that's a conversation all on its own, but I want to pick y'all up to speed about what's happening because apparently, actually not even apparently, this is exactly what's going on. Most of the jury in this case is all white. It's only one black man. So this is what they're saying in NPR news. How the jury in Ahmaud Aubrey case ended up nearly all white and why it matters. And I'm just going to read a little excerpt. I'm going to start putting in the links for y'all to go read for yourselves. Over the course of jury selection, prosecutors in Georgia objected to defense attorneys as they repeatedly moved to strike potential black jurors from the trial, calling it unconstitutional. And while judge Timothy Walsman Walsley acknowledged intentional discrimination in the panel, he told the court he was unable to reinstate any jurors who had been dismissed saying the defense made race neutral arguments for tossing them out. See, and that's what I'd be saying real technical. If that would have been the other way around. Two black people, two black adults killed a white kid, chased them down in a truck because they thought that this was the person that was breaking in around the hood. Then they wouldn't have been that technical. They wouldn't have been, well, you know, hey, you know, they, they did it the right way because according to law, and, and that's, and that's, why we're all mad at these cases, dusty whites, is because if it was a black person, judges would not be coddling the black person. Judges would not be letting 11, 11 out of 12 jurors be black and one white. So basically in this article is saying that he knows that it's bias. He sees the, un, the racial undertone in the jury. And he still is just like, well, because it's not against the law for the reason that they tossed them out, then I have no control. It's really funny when judges say that they have no control because they do have a lot of control. I mean, if you don't think that they do, just look at this case with Cal Rittenhouse. He's screaming at the prosecutor. He 
threatening to mistrial. He do he doing a lot for somebody that ain't got no power. And then this judge is just like, oh, well, I don't got no power. That judge has a lot of power. That judge in the Cal Rittenhouse case has a lot of power. This judge ain't got no power. So I'm just trying to figure out what the, what judge got power and which ones don't so we can know where to send the black people to when we shoot somebody down in the street because we think that those are the white kids that are breaking into the store at the hood or graffitiing the sidewalks or whatever. We just want to know. You know, we we just want to know. It's just getting to the point where it's just becoming ridiculous. And it's not even re really ridiculous. And black people really shouldn't even be surprised at this point because this has always been the undertone of the justice system for us. So I'm not mad at it. I, I'm mad at it, but it's just like, can you really be surprised? So there's one thing. Let me just go back to the other the other point. Okay, so... In the in the police report, because I got this pulled up too. Upon my arrival, I observed Officer Minshaw, 184, setting up a perimeter. I began speaking with Gregory McMichael, who was a witness to the incident. McMichael stated there had been several break-ins in the neighborhood, and further, the suspect was caught on surveillance. McMich McMichael stated he was in his front yard and saw the suspect from the break-in hauling ass down the Satilla drive towards Buford drive. McMichael stated he then ran inside his house and called to Travis McMichael and said, Travis, the guy is running down the street. Let's go. McMichael stated he went to his bedroom and grabbed his, 357 Magnum and Travis grabbed his shotgun because they didn't know if the man was armed or not. Okay, right there. Why do you need two guns to chase down to chase down one person? And let's just let's just put it back into perspective because now these two cases is kind of aligning up. Cal Rittenhouse, he gets off. Why? Because it was self-defense and he was running away. But then this is just clearly just a, and this is what they're going to try to say in court, y'all. This was a citizen arrest because we caught him on camera inside of this basic, a, a frame of a house. It wasn't even built yet. It wasn't anything. I love how they just keep acting like it was a house. This was a empty frame of a house. They was building the house. So it was nothing in there. No tools, no furniture, no win The windows wasn't even put up yet. But Cal Rittenhouse, he can run away, shoot somebody, and claim that it's self-defense. And the judge throws out the gun charge. He um, coddles him in court. He says that, hey, this is self-defense, and he was within his rights in Wisconsin as a 17-year-old with a um, military-style gun. And then you get to this case, the Ahmaud Arbery case, and Ahmad Aubrey was running away from these two people. I thought that if a suspect is running away, then you're not supposed to shoot them. And actually, if you go look at the video, once they caught up to him, Ahmad Aubrey and Gregory McMichael got into a scuffle. Now, can we say that that's self-defense? That he was defending himself? Because these two random white people ran up on him with a 357 Magnum and a shotgun. But the, but the course is it's not going to say that they're going to let these two people get off because why it was a civil arrest. That's what they're going to say. Let's look into some more history and to Gregory McMichael. I just read y'all the police file. Like I said, I have it in the link. Now, if you go to, the police file, and this is from alive eleven alive dot com. Now, he was a cop from November nineteen ninety five up until May thirty first two thousand eleven when he retired for um, Glen County. And in his police report, let me see if I can find it. In his police report, well, his evaluation. Excuse me, his evaluation. I'm just gonna read. A little excerpt from his performance evaluation. In one signed January 
three, a comment under employee strength in the overall eva- evaluation says McMichael has the desire to become a good cop off good police officer and with the proper training and experience will become a valuable access to this department. There are similar comments on the evaluation documents from his earlier years as a cop, noting that with time, more experience and more training, McMichael would do a good job. See, that part is where I got a problem with because it always just seems like when white people get in trouble, they bring up their third grade pictures of them picking apples in the garden and, you know, they they volunteered at the homeless shelter and they're just such a good person. But then when this whole trial thing was going on and it was in the news, what did they show of Ahmaud Arbery? That he was a um previous um criminal for stealing, you know, and all of that stuff. They always bring the the bad things up or the criminal records or any dirt that black people got on them when we get wrongfully shot or we're not armed and we get shot by white people or cops or even another race. But then when they know that white people are in the wrong, they'll bring up all the good things. It's, it's basically low grade propaganda, you know? So, that's what's happening here. They're bringing up his employee strengths and saying that he would be a good cop, a cop with more time and more training. And this was like in the beginning before he even got up on the, the, um, the force or whatever like that. I don't know what he was doing because this say 1984, but it say that he was, Oh, I think that he's been a cop for a little while and he just started working for, Glen County so he was a cop somewhere else and that's what they said and then he went to Glen County okay so now I got it and then but I want y'all to peep this right here in a performance evaluation report signed in 19 in in January 1984 there's a comment under oral communication that he finds it hard sometimes to listen while in a group when there are several people talking okay don't y'all think that that's kind of dangerous for a cop to not know how to work under pressure because a lot of people talking and communicating and doing all this stuff, you know, if you go to a, a real crime scene where it's just about to go down and a bunch of people is talking, you talking to them, they talking. It's dire for police officers to have good communication skills. I want my cop, my police officer that comes to a crime to have good communication skills. Didn't they see that as a red flag? That he gets distracted in a group of people? Is this nigga ADHD? Do we have, like, low communication? I don't know. But I'm not saying that he shouldn't have been on there. But that should just show you maybe he shouldn't be out on the field. Maybe we should put him as a mall cop. Maybe we should put him on a desk. Maybe he shouldn't be out there. But this incident that happened happened after he retired. And that's exactly how he acted. He acted like he was still a police officer, retired and all, and then brung his son in like he was his partner, partner in crime. Because that's exactly what this was. You shot somebody that was running away from you. And before the dusty white star saying, well, he, they was doing a civil arrest. I, I don't know. It just kind of seems that now that the black person is in the space of running away from a crime and then defending himself when these two dusty white people come up on him with a gun, then, oh, that's a civil arrest. But then when Cal Rittenhouse does it, defending himself. So which one is it? It just always seems like anytime white people is under the fire, then it's a law in place for them. But when black people do it, then there's no law. It gets real sloppy, real sloppy like. For, for black people in the justice system and when we have to defend ourselves or we have to make it a civil arrest. This is my only, and I've gotten to the point where me as a black person, and I've thought about this because I've gotten into arguments online with a lot of dusty white people that still think racism is white people whipping us with whips and we picking cotton. That is not racism. Racism 
Real racism is control, control of a people without giving them resources that they can use on their own. That's real racism. Go read Powernomics by Claude Anderson. He'll tell you about how systematic racism have messed up the whole bloodline of black people. And it just makes me feel like at this point with these two cases that I, as a black person, cannot afford to see things colorblindly anymore. Because most of the time I do try to be biased. I mean, unbiased about situations like, well, was they following the law when it happened? Because I would like the judicial system to do that with black people. But time after time and after time again, we see that the judicial system, the school system, the healthcare system, the real estate system, every single system has been put in place to oppress black people and keep them in the slave class. They will let every other race of people rise. They will not let that happen with black people. And just like myself, a lot of black people is waking up to this. I used to be that colorblind person because, you know, I had white friends and I had black friends and we all hung out together. I had Mexican friends and Chinese friends and Arabic friends and, you know, I never seen color with them. They never seen color with me. Um, you know, I always had a little money up on my paycheck. I always got the pats on the back for doing a good job. And, you know, and no other race of people were threatened by me. So I thought, oh, well, you know, it really can't be that bad. But these cases and as once I grew up, once I got past the age of maybe 23, 24 is when I started being like, well, that ain't fair. And that ain't fair. But just recently, once Trump got elected is when I really started paying attention to systematic racism, how they've created this whole system around oppressing black people and how they've done it so strategically that They've even brainwashed white people to not see they BS. So then white people get mad at black people because they're like, nah, ain't no systematic racism going on. You just lazy. And then black people get mad at white people because they're like, no, you don't see it. And the reason you don't see it is because you're white. And that really is the answer is because they're white, because they put the system. I don't know if the system is Jewish people, white people, Mexican people. I just know that there is a class of elite people that have put certain races on a pedestal to oppress black people and keep us down low. And anytime we try to communicate to other races, because it ain't just white people that's racist towards black people. I've met some pretty Mets, um, racist Mexicans, the Hispanic um, race don't see that we're being systematically oppressed. Is something about black people that they just want to keep down, and I can't quite put my finger on it. But I recently read J. Edgar Hoover's FBI files about keeping the black messiah from rising. So that should tell you something. That it's something about black people that they don't want us to know about ourselves And they don't want any other race to know about us either. They want to keep this propaganda move of black people are lazy, black people are ghetto, black people, you know, only care about, you know, um, jewelry, cars, clothes, and clubbing and partying. And that's why we at the bottom. That's why. So really don't know what's going on. I would advise black people get off that cow ridden house It's not worth your time. You know that he's going to get off. But look very closely at this Ahmaud Arbery, and I'm going to tell you right now, I'm telling you, they are going to say that this was a civil arrest. That's it. Um, Let's get to the last conversation. Um, The New Dems. Who are they? What are they doing? Well, I'll tell you. (laughs) Apparently... The New Dems are a group of Democrats that were already in the Democrat Party, representatives from the Democrat Party, and they are 
um, separating themselves from the Democrat Party, the original Democrat Party, because uh, they don't want to be identified with the whole protest and the wokeness and so on and so forth or whatever. I don't know. But I seen this very not only funny, but really just comical like clip from TD News. I get a lot of my stuff from there and I expound on it from there. And he showed this clip of like the new Democrats. So it's just like, I don't know. But I'm going to show it right here. Democrats have taken control of the House representatives. A historic accomplishment for the Democrats. New Dems make the majority because we represent the majority. We listen. We listen. We listen. We listen. We listen. We listen to what America needs. We fight. We fight for our principles. Abigail Spanberger is my name. This is what democracy looks like. We just made history. We defend American values. We believe in an economy that works for everyone. Everyone getting a fair shot to earn a good life. We are pro-growth. Pro-innovation. And we hold the line. Against those who seek nothing less than the destruction of America. The destruction of our democracy. We win in the districts that decide whether America keeps moving forward. Building back better and stronger, or goes right back to the division, the chaos, the despair, and the hate. New Dems make the majority. And we will defend the majority. For a bold America. For a strong America. For a free America. For America that will lead the world in every way. Forward. Okay. So, after watching that, after watching that, I have just a couple of things that I have questions about. Look, they're new. They're new. I don't know anything about them. I've typed them on Instagram, on Facebook, on Google, and nothing pulls up. That video that you just seen does not pull up at all. So I have no idea what to say about it, honestly, is so crazy. But, yeah, you can't find it nowhere. But I have a couple of questions, like I said. One, the language of it, the minor, of the majority. We're protecting the, min the majority. Okay, well, here in the United States, which that's where you're at, who do they say is the majority? I mean, just look at the party. Who is the majority of the, who are the majority of the representatives of this party? Just ask yourself that. I'm just saying, ask yourself these questions. I'm not trying to argue. I'm not trying to make a profound point or anything. It's just sometimes if you ask yourself questions, then you'll get the answer after asking yourself the questions of why would these Democrats be separating themselves from the original Democrat party. So that's the question. I already asked one question. Who is the majority in America that they say is the majority? And then who is the minority? So if you're protecting the majority, who is that? Is that the majority that, You've been helping this whole time as in giving executive orders and, you know, giving money away to those certain set of people because don't get it twisted. Whenever these immigrants from other countries come in, they become white on the censor. So there's one question that I have to ask. The second question that I have to ask is, out of the three, out of the, you know, set of people that's in there, we see the majority of them. So there's uh, what looked like Mexican man, a uh, really light skinned black person, which I'm not a color. I'm not a colorist. So I'm, I'm black people are black people and a native American. I looked her up. 
Now, when you go and go look up all the bills, because don't get it twisted, they're not just a new party or nothing. They was already in the party and already representatives for a long time. And if you go, and that's what I did, I went and looked up, you know, some of the bills that they wanted in place when, since they've been in office. Well, for the Native American, she's apparently um, LBGT and she's um, Native. And when I looked hers up, it was a bunch of Native American, you know, bills that she wanted to be passed, which is really funny because. Just recently, I think today, this will air Friday. So just today, as I'm airing this, George Biden, I mean, George Biden, Joe Biden is signing an executive order for Native Americans for them to get, I think, $50 billion and a lot of resources, a lot of resources. So, and then you get one person which is the Mexican kind of looking dude. He got a bunch of army stuff, a lot of things for vets. And don't get me wrong. I love my vet- veterans on um, veterans day just passed. I think a little while ago and, you know, salute to anyone that has enough courage to go out there and go fight for, you know, my rights in this country. Thank you for serving in, uh, in the um, field for us, you know, um, and then you get the one lady, I think that her name is, um, what's her name? What's her name? What's her name? Marilyn Strickland. She's the black person, the only black person on the, um, representative role for the new Dems. And it kind of looked like the bills that she wanted passed or was, you know, in alignment for or wanted to pass or whatever. It's just like a mixture of everybody's laws out of this new Dems, you know, party that they trying to create. But you know what I don't see? Nobody talking about reparations. I didn't see not one blackity black, black, black thing for black folks anywhere. If you're trying to separate yourself from the, the old Democrat party, because don't get it twisted, Democrats. Black people are not mad that you was for protesting and all of that stuff and being extra woke and wearing Kenta Claus at the Congress and everything. Ain't that what they did last year? <laughs> I don't know. We're not mad at that. We're mad because you gave every single race, organization, ethnicity, everybody, either an executive order crime bill, an executive order protection bill, or money. All of those things should be black people. That should be ours. So it's just very funny that they're trying to separate themselves like, no, we ain't the ones that didn't give you no money and no laws and no protection. That's them niggas over there. No, it was y'all. Y'all, y'all was there too. Y'all was there too. <laughs> And then you have to ask yourself one more question. Why would the new Dems want to separate themselves from the original Dems? Well, let's just look at what happened to the Democrats in like the mid season, or I guess like the midterms. I'm sorry. I don't even vote, but I read this on Politico. Um, but right off the bat, Democrats got their cl- they clock cleaned. No one seems ready for to change anything. So apparently in the mid, actually, let me, let me just look it up because you know, they be tripping. They don't be wanting to show me no information. Okay. So this is the guardian. What just happened? Why would they be trying to separate themselves. Why would they be trying to create a new Democrat party? Well, what just happened in the midterms? Democrats look poised to lose their majority in the midterms. So 
Democrats have just lost an enormous amount of ground since dominating Virginia during the Trump era. The first and most important takeaway of the governor's race is that this is normal. Without a major crisis like 9-11, the party in power will always lose ground election like this. It's as close to an ironclad law as there is. Beware of any take that blame the spec specter of critical race theory or mass mandate. Can you remember what specific niche issue animated Democrats in 2017-18 or Republican 2009-10 beyond a broad dislike of the president? So they're trying to basically cap for them, but they just won't come out and say that the Democrats just lost a major state, which is Virginia. That's where they got the most ground at in Virginia, and they just recently lost that. And then let's just go and see Joe Biden's popularity. What What's happening right now? This is... And we don't we don't follow all these news networks over here, but we just trying to get a little bit of information. You just kind of got to read in between the lines like I did. But with President Joe Biden approval sliding. So Joe Biden approval is sliding in the recent months. Democrats are rallying around the substance popularity of his signature economic plan to save them in the midterm election, increasing the pressure on slim majorities in Congress to deliver after a sting electoral defeat in blue Virginia. So basically black people didn't come out to vote for him. And now he's trying to give, he's trying to give money to immigrants so that they will vote for him. They'll vote Democrat. He's trying to give money to native Americans so that they'll vote Democrat. Because black people didn't save him this time. So this is just, this is a ploy, y'all. This is a ploy, black black voters, black Democrat voters. It, they're not new. They're the same. They're just trying to separate themselves so that they can come up with a plan to reel you back in to the Democrat Party because black voters did not come out to vote. So don't let the new Dems play you. This, let me just put it like this. We all know that one store in the hood that always have under new management sign on the top. That's the same thing. It's never really new management. They just say that because the store got too many complaints. And so they're like, oh, you know, we got to make sure that, you know, people think that this is under new management. They might even, they might even change the store name. But when you go in there, the store is still set up the same the prices are still the same. You even see the one dude in the back still working. So what's the difference? Nothing. They just changed the name and they put under new management. That's exactly what the new Dems are doing. They didn't separate. Them still the same laws. How are you going to try to attract and get the black vote again? But you got majority white people and none of you guys said anything about reparations in the last 10 years. You just said a whole bunch of blackity black, black, black stuff to get black. But where's the reparations? N nobody has brought in a law for that or a bill for that or even said anything about that. It's just so funny how, like, they know that reparations in some form would solve a lot of this racial attention because once black people get their money they gone we're gone so it's like a love hate relationship of like black people in the government it's like we love y'all enough to work but we don't love y'all enough to give y'all reparations so that y'all can go and be on y'all and we hate y'all because y'all lazy but y'all are our slaves and y'all work harder than anybody else in the whole world like harder than any other race here so it's like you either give us the reparations so that we can build it on our own, but they won't do that because then they will have no slave class. They will have no one to have all of the low income jobs and all of the hard work and all of the, you know, just the, the work that no one else wants to do. 
they, they won't have anyone to do that. It's kind of basically like slavery, you know, like, and that's another thing. Like people think just because you're getting paid, then you ain't a slave. No, bro. If I work somewhere for five years and I've been doing a job and I do it the best out of everyone here. And then someone white or another race comes in and you give them the position that I've basically been training my whole life. And we both go after the supervisor position and this person that's been here for three months, get it. And I've been working here five years and get, and don't get it. Then yeah, that's kind of a form of like slavery. It's a form of slavery. It's not slavery, but it's a form of it because you're, not giving me the resources that I've worked hard for, you know? And then the crazy thing about those situations is that usually the person that they'll hire to that, that's been here only three months will come to you. That's been there five years and say, Hey, how do you do it? <laughs> when, when the, the supervisor could have just hired you and then you could have had 10 of me instead of, this person that doesn't know anything about the job because they've only been here for three years, but Oh, you hired him because he looks better for the face of this department because he's white or Mexican or whatever, just not black. We just don't want black. <laughs> so yeah, I want y'all to go. And if y'all find something, let me know because honestly I didn't find nothing on the dude new dims but just ask yourself them three questions why would they be splitting up and then ask yourself okay well what happened this week for them to be wanting to split up and then secondly ask yourself who is the my the majority who's the majority that they're talking about is it the majority of democrats is it the, the majority of the united states because we know who the majority claims to be of the United States. So, yeah, I would have some like little Netflix stuff for y'all, but I ain't really been watching TV too much. I've been keeping up with all of this stuff that's going on. So, no Netflix series. I haven't watched anything, but you know, y'all all can reach me on my social medias and now with Crowder for Facebook and Instagram. And then um Crowder the Great on Twitter, and you can catch this podcast on other streaming platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Anchor, Spotify, and here, YouTube. So I'm out. Bye.